not recipes, but dinners. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And wouldn't it be great if every one of those 175 dinner recipes would all work and work beautifully? Because, Julia, how many times are these tested? A lot, she said. Between 30 and 50 times. Between 30 and 50 yes. times. Julia is back with us. Hi, friend. It's so nice to see you. Julia Davison, you know her and love her from America's Test Kitchen. And this is remarkable. You didn't let us down on this book either. No. Because with 175 dinners inside, each one being able to be prepared in an hour or less, mm -hmm. most of them much less. Most of them 45 minutes or 30 minutes. How about that? And then every one of the dinner recipes not only has a completed photo, yes, but progressive photos that kind of walk us through step by step. Yeah, this so we redesigned this book from the ground up because if you see the ingredient list, that's a shopping list. Take yep. a picture with your phone, go to the store. I totally do that. And right, me too. And then these, here's here's how you're cooking. These are the instructions, and they go along with steps. So that if you're making something new for the first time, which is our hope with this book, introduce you to new flavors, new techniques. You know, take a walk around your soup market there's a lot more available nowadays than there used to be and how you cook with those things to make easy dinners and this pork milanese is on oh, the table might yes. be a good place to start oh. and ordinarily I wait to take you on a tour of the book but it's so important that you see how the book is laid mm -hmm. out but let's get back to pork milanese yes complete with instructions on pounding the pork cutlets mm -hmm. so you get just the proper Result. That's it. Now tell us about pork milanese. Okay, the pork milanese starts with the pork. Yep. What's important is you use pork tenderloin, which is nice and inexpensive. There's one per package, so right. it's really easy to portion. You cut it in half and you pound it, and that's it. Beautiful. It's naturally tender. It cooks up in minutes because it's so thin. You put a little crunchy coating on there made of some panko breadcrumbs. Mm. Make a little arugula salad with some parmesan with some, a little lemon. Yes. Is it? And it's a simple dinner, probably not something you make all the time, but it's a nice change of pace. Just a a little change of pace from chicken to pork. And look how beautiful. And if you yes. wanted to substitute chicken for the pork, you could do that. You could you? do that, absolutely. With the coating work on chicken absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Oh, it's delicious. Isn't that good? Really good. Mm. And something like this. Now, this is a roast chicken with orzo and butternut squash. And we teach you how to cook the butternut squash and orzo together. One pot. You mm. start with the. You like that, don't I you? I do like that pork a lot. <laughs> you throw the chicken in the oven. You start the you start the orzo and butternut squash. Mm. And I think that's a lot of questions people have when you're trying to get dinner on the table. What's the timing? And this answers that question. We tell you what to do when so you can get the complete dinner all warm and perfectly cooked on the table. Well, you know, something I like to call supermarket shortcuts. You can now buy butternut squash already. I know. Peeled, washed, mm -hmm. cubed, and in a nice, yep. neat package. Well, and the thing we found is actually when you're buying butternut squash, mm. do, isn't that good? Yum. I know. With the orzo? Yes, and a little bit of spinach, baby spinach and in the there. chicken? It is so easy. But the thing about butternut squash, and we tell you this up. in the book, don't, don't buy it already cut up, but buy it peeled and halved. You know how you can buy it shrink wrapped? Oh, yeah, yeah. The flavor in the peeled and halved is way better than the one cut up. So wow. we and we describe that to you what to buy when because we know you want to make shortcuts what kind of um, artichokes to buy don't buy the frozen buy the canned in water they have a little bit more texture and we explain nice. these tricks to you as you go along now how about chicken tortilla oh. soup I'd like to tell you that we're past soup season but we're not no oh, no it's always Still soup cold. season yeah. yeah unfortunately around right. here uh, so this is chicken tortilla soup we added just a little Swiss chard in there just to amp it up a bit nice yeah and here we have these strips and these are easy to make you want to make them at home because you don't want the greasy ones from the store. These are just corn tortillas you throw in the oven. Nice. Put a few little pieces of uh, cilantro, cilantro on there. Of yeah. Course. And then you push those tortilla strips down in there. You get them a little soggy. Uh, and it's the broth. I mean, it's a really fast soup, oh but it has more flavor than your average chicken noodle. I love mm. chicken noodle, but sometimes you want a little something I'm afraid new. you're going to have to hold that for me. Yeah, absolutely. So I can bust out the happy dance. <laughs> yeah. That chicken tortilla is amazing. Yes. Oh, yes. those are so great. It's good. All right. Now this. Oh, oh I that's know. as pretty as it, as it looks delicious, right? Yeah, it's a chorizo and roasted corn tostada. Super easy to make. Now this recipe will only take you about 30 minutes. And because it's on a corn, yep. um, on a on a corn tortilla, you mm -hmm. know it's more traditional, right? Yep, that's it. So you put the tortillas with the black beans in the oven. You roast the corn and the chorizo, and you use coleslaw mm. mix. You know the coleslaw mix is already shredded. Top it with a little brine from the pickle jar. I taste it. Yeah, isn't that good? I, my, my mom usually yeah. puts the the pickle juice in her slaw. Uh huh. 
So just like you've done here, wow. Yeah, and it just makes a really quick coleslaw. Isn't that good? It's Again, delicious. it's a change of pace. And what I really like about this book is we're introducing new flavors that you see in every supermarket. Because as I mentioned, supermarkets are different today. There's a lot more available. We explain how to use those flavors in an easy way. How about skillet penne with chickpeas and cauliflower? All the different kinds of things that you're making and step-by-step -step photos. Every single recipe has not only a completed photo, but the step-by-step -step photographs. Every one of these recipes has been tested by the chefs at America's Test Kitchen 30 to 50 times. There is no chance that you're going to get this recipe home and say, yeah, it didn't work for me. Nope, it's always yeah, going to work. It's always mm -hmm. going to work. I mean, look at this. Pork tacos. Oh, they're spicy so Korean style. good. They're so good. The 1,100 books are now gone. Which one was that? Is that, was that the pork again? No, that, was the, that is pork milk. Yeah. And then roasted oh, pork that tenderloin. that one, the roast pork tenderloin. That's an interesting recipe. Is we, that with the hoisin? Yeah, you put the whole thing on. Here it is. It's on um, a sheet pan. You use a slightly bigger sheet pan. You put the potatoes down. You notice the beans are under the pork tenderloins. Mm. Brush them with hoisin. Roast it all at the same time. It's a sheet pan dinner. That's a sheet pan dinner. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and while the pork rests, you continue to cook all the vegetables. What is this spaghetti oh, spring, colorful, yeah, gorgeous? What so is this? so easy. Perfect for, for today. It's spring, finally. Right. And it's zucchini and peas and asparagus, and you just saute them up. But the tomatoes, you leave them raw, but you put a little salt and garlic on them, and you let them sit on the counter. So when you toss it with the pasta, it has extra flavor. Mm -hmm. Simple vinaigrette for a dressing. What is this? Stir fried beef. Stir fried beef, yeah. I'm on it. And, you know, a lot of times I think people like to skip corners and buy their stir fry sauce. Don't do it. There's, they don't taste very good, but if you make your own, it's just soy sauce, a little bit of orange juice, mm. a little honey, pepper flakes. Delightful. Isn't that good? This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Now this is a halibut. And notice you put them in the foil packs. You put the packs on top of the on top of the potatoes on the sheet pan. You throw the whole thing in the oven. So you get a wonderful, perfectly cooked piece of fish and beautifully roasted potatoes all at once. So it's like almost like doing it on papillote. Mm -hmm. you, you would do it with parchment paper, but That's you're doing it. a little tin foil boat. So much easier. So way easier. Yeah. And when you're done, just ball it up and put it in the recycle <laughs> bin, right? It's true. Um, do they recycle tin foil? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this is F1332. 13327. This will ship out on the 18th of April. How many mm -hmm. are gone now? 1,500 books are gone. It's dinner illustrated by none other than America's Test Kitchen and Julia Davison. It is so great. Oh, to be so back. nice to see you. Mwah. Thank you for everything. Tell everybody up there we say hi. I will do. And when I say up there, I mean Boston. <laughs> yes. Where it's still very cold. It's very icy. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart. Oh, thank you. I know you all been through it. Uh, um, here, let me leave this with you. Thank you. Gorgeous.